Hello and welcome to a new episode of Jumping Let's Play. This week we are taking a look at the trick-taking game Shamans. In this game you will be trying to protect your world from the looming shadow that threatens it. Some of the players uh, in this game will actually be uh, shamans, others will be uh, shadows. So this is also a hidden role game and I do love those. So let's go below, we will take a look at how the game is played and then we'll come back up to discuss our thoughts on the game. See you in a moment. So here we are set up for a three play game of Shamans. It's a fairly simple setup for this game. You've got this beautiful board uh, down here and we've got the shadow marker and we will be looking for the player count here. So we've got three, we've got four, we've got five. So we are placing our shadow marker here here we have our stack of artifact tiles. We have two that are placed face up randomly. And then we've got our victory points at the end here. Each player is dealt a roll, uh, which will be these cards. We'll show you these in just a moment. And then every player is dealt a number of cards. So a three player game, each player is dealt nine cards. The three remaining are placed on their relevant worlds. Uh, so we have some cards that are going to start off some of the worlds for us. We also have our first player token, and this will be for the guide each turn. Whoever plays the highest cards in a um, matching suit will get this for the um, next turn. So, as I said, each player is given a hidden roll card for the purposes of this game. Um, we can show you these. So we have got the shadow here. There are normally two of these, but in a three player game, we're only using one. And we have our two shamans here for our three player game. So the game is uh, played out in a series of rounds. It, the first player to eight points uh, wins the game. Uh, if you don't have eight points at the end of a round, then we just shuffle up and begin a new round. Everyone will choose a card from their hands. So let's take a look here. So say we are the first player, we are the guide for this round. We will take a look through our cards and we will pick one that will be the destination world or the trump suit if you're using traditional trick-taking uh, names. So let's go... Let's go with this one. So we would play this one, and then every other player would then simultaneously pick a card to go with that as well. So our shadow player here can't actually play a uh, card that's in our suit. So what they can do, or if they did have a card in our suit, they could do this as well, is play a card from another um, suit. So they're gonna play this one. And then this player here is gonna take a look through theirs they're going to play this one here. So what will happen now is any cards that don't match the suit are placed on their destination world and then the shadow market is moved forward one space. Then we take a look at the cards that are uh, matching and we will take a look at their values. So we've got two here, the four that we placed and the uh, one that this player here had placed. So the lowest cards will be able to take either one of these or the top one off of this. So they're going to go for this one here. So they will take that. Because it's face up, it stays face up in front of them. So they have that there. And then we replace this one here. These are then added to their world. And we start a new round. So as we were the player that played the highest cards, we stay the guides. So we will take a look through our cards once more. Let's go. You might play a six, for example. And then we'll go around to the other players. They're going to take a look through theirs. Again, they've got nothing that matches here. So they might just get rid of a two there. And then this player 
to look in here they're going to get rid of a five so again we will take a look so our shadow player obviously we don't know it's the shadow player if we're playing a real game uh, has a card that doesn't match the suits that is placed here and this moves forward by one these two cards well we played the six so we have the highest card they've got the five that is the lowest cards so they will get to take one of these or this one they will take this one off the top here we'll just show you what that is okay so this is a uh, card where you have to reveal the uh, roll of your um, hidden roll cards so he has to reveal it so everyone knows that he is a uh, shaman obviously for us then because we know we're a shaman we can deduce who is the um, shadow from this but these cards are placed here and then we stay as the first player so we're now going to take a look through and we're going to play this one then we go to this player here okay they will play this one here for the moment and then this player here is going to play this one so everything matches in the suit so this does not advance we would take a look we played the four so we have the lowest card so we get to take one of these which we will uh, now that we know who the shadow is we want to start getting towards um, this uh, world here we reveal the next one and then uh, this player here will um, get the oh sorry this player here uh, will now put these here and they get the first player marker so let's take a look and see what they've got in their hands so we have got greens and purples here so let's go for so they're going to play that we'll take a look at the other two here they will play that one and then we will play this one here so we take a look that everything matches this doesn't move up this player played the highest card we played the lowest so we get to take one of these so let's take this one here and then this player will take these cards add them to their world or to the destination world and they become the first player so we will take a look through they're going to play this one here so we'll take a look through our cards we've got nothing that matches so what we will do we will play say this one here and then this player comes along and they are going to play this one here for example so we've got two cards that don't match so these go here and here this then moves forward too and our uh, player here has played both the uh, lowest and the highest cards in this suit. So he gets to take one of these. So he will take this one here. And he will also get to place this and stay as the um, guide for this round. So he will take a look through. And he's going to play this one we'll go in here and we're going to play this one and then finally the shadow player is going to play this one here 
So we take a look again, we've got two cards that don't match the suit. So these are placed here. And this moves forward too. Now we take a look at these completed worlds. These have got all six cards in them. So this player had placed theirs here. You can now perform that world's ritual. So these rituals will be different um, abilities that will be activated when you have all the cards for that uh, world ritual down here. So for a three player game, it's cards one to six, having all six on this bit. So this player had to place their card. They now get to perform this ritual. However, they don't have one of these, so uh, they can't perform it. However, we have done ours and we get to perform our ritual. So that will uh, be discarded and we will use that to then eliminate another player. Seeing as we know that this is an ally, this is a fellow shaman, we are going to eliminate this player. This player, uh, the shadow, is eliminated from the round and then the round ends. The round has ended because all of the shadows have been exposed, which means that the players who weren't eliminated each get two points. So he's got his two, he's got his two. What will happen now, because we are at the end of the round, is all the cards will be taken back in. So every single card here, like so. Then all of these are reshuffled and the only thing that the players keep are their points. So these two players keep their two points, everything else is shuffled and then the game is reset for a new round. And you will keep going until uh, one of the players uh, gets at least eight points at the end of any round. So that is a quick playthrough of a round on shamans. We will head up back top and we will uh, discuss our final thoughts. See you in a moment. Okay, so there we go. That was a playthrough of one round of shamans. As you can see there, absolutely beautiful game, uh, easy setup there. And it is a wonderful addition, as we've already said, to trick-taking games. Uh, recently. There have been others that have come out in the last few years like Fox in the Forest and uh, The Crew by Thames and Cosmos so it really is good to see this uh, genre being further explored. I love the addition of the hidden roles in this so not only are you trying to complete tricks to stop the shadow from uh, getting to your world but some players are actually acting as the shadow so they are trying to uh, get the uh, the shadow marker all the way over to that world and because it's a um, hidden roll game you don't know who's doing what and why they're doing it for example uh, as you would have seen in our uh, playthrough sometimes a uh, shaman player had to play a card that was off suit because they just didn't have a card that matched that suit which meant that the shadow could advance further obviously we were able to use the um, hidden roll revealing token so that we knew who was who but there's still that element of are they doing it because they uh this is the only play that they have or are they doing it because they're actively trying to accelerate the uh, shadows journey to the world the artwork on this is phenomenal um you can just see from the video itself everything is just lovingly uh crafted here the game board is Perhaps one of the best game boards I've seen in a little while now. Um, just sweet and uh, to the point, but all that little uh, foiling with the blue, absolutely beautiful there. And on the cards themselves, the suits are all very, very clear. And the artwork depicting each of the worlds that the suits represent is just absolutely lovely. And then you've got the shamans and the shadows themselves, which are just literally out of this world they are uh, absolutely amazing to look at they've done a really really good job on the art and the design of this game 
it does have a uh, variable starting point for the amount of players. So if you're working your way through a three or four or five player game, you have different start points. This means that the game scales well depend on the amount of players. Three player game means that the shadow player, who is by themselves, by the way, in a three or a four player game, uh, they don't have so far to travel, which means that over the course of the game, other people are likely to contribute to them uh, traveling just by the very nature of sometimes you're just not going to have a card in the same suit as the uh, guides that has uh, played the destination suit. And then in a five player game, you've got two uh, shadow players working together so they can really come up that track if they so wish to get to the end. Uh, we didn't really explore too many of the artifact tiles in the uh, playthrough. We saw one, the neutralization, uh, the ritual dagger, which allowed us to eliminate a player. But there's a whole load of others as well, which is really nice. Just adds another element to the game because you can get yourself points, you can advance the... Um, shadow marker you can uh, fake it retreat you can eliminate other players as well and also uh, swap roles as well which i really like so there's a lot of variability with those uh, swapping the roles you may see that the shadow is about to lose so you swap with someone else and uh, hope that you get a shade run so you can bag some points at the end the elimination is uh, really well done uh, each round is fairly short in and of itself so the player elimination is only for a very, very short time. I'm not too keen on player elimination in many games. Some like King of Tokyo are over so fast that the player elimination really doesn't matter in there because you're all going to start a new game very soon. And it's the same with Shamans here. You're uh, going to uh, play through most of the round just by default because they're going to have to have six to eight cards in that destination world and have the ritual dagger in order to eliminate someone. So you're going to see most of the rounds and hopefully all of the rounds. But if you are eliminated, it's not going to be long before the round is over. People get their points and then uh, you start again. All in all, um, it's just an amazing, amazing game. Really deep strategic card game here. And uh, congratulations to it, by the way, uh, this weekend. Uh, it's the UK Games Expo, which unfortunately we could not attend at this time. Uh, but it's up for an award at the UK Games Expo for the best, strate best strategic card game. We can get that out there. Um, so good luck to Shamans. Uh, it is a wonderful game. If you'd like to try it out, do come down to the shop and we'll be happy to sit down and give you a uh, show of it. It is a three-player game, so... Ideally, we would need a couple of you. If not, then I will just have to role play uh, two of the players. But if you want to give that a go, then come on down. We will have stock of this as well. We're hoping to get it this week, but it looks like it will be in over the weekend. So uh, if you want a copy, let us know. And then when they do come in, we can make sure one of those is reserved for you. All in all, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, this is, as I said, just a wonderful game and I hope you get a chance to play it too. Good luck to Shamans at UK Games Expo and we'll see you all in the boardroom.